Hey everyone, this lesson is on lice, or otherwise known as pediculosis. In this lesson, we're going to talk about head lice, body lice, and pubic lice. And we're going to talk about some of the signs and symptoms, and we're also going to talk about how to diagnose and how to treat. So lice is an infestation of the body, the head hair, or pubic hair by an obligate insect parasite. That is what lice is. And there are actually three species of lice unique to humans. The first species is Pediculus humanus capitis, which is the head louse, and the word louse is just the singular form of lice. And here's an image of Pediculus humanus capitis. Having Pediculus humanus capitis leads to the condition known as Pediculosis capitis, which is just having lice in the hair or on the head. The second species is Pediculus humanus humanus, or Pediculus humanus corporis, which is the body louse, and here's an image of that louse. And having this type of lice leads to the condition known as pediculosis corporis. And the third species is Phthreus pubis, which is the crab louse or pubic lice. And here's an image of that louse as well. Having this lice can lead to a couple of different conditions. The first one is pediculosis pubis or infestation of the pubic hair by this lice. The second one, interestingly, is known as pediculosis ciliaris, which is an infestation of the eyelashes. So this type of louse can actually infest the eyelashes of an infected individual. So we're going to talk about epidemiological factors. We're going to split them up depending on the species of louse. So with regards to head lice, some of the epidemiological factors include the following. Children are most commonly affected, more so than older individuals. Females are more often affected than males. And Individuals of European descent have a higher likelihood of, in, of infestation than those of African descent. The reasons for these causes or these factors are not well understood. With regards to body lice, some of the risk factors include the following. Poverty is a big one with regards to body lice. A second one is poor hygiene. A lot of times having poor hygiene can increase the likelihood of having body lice. So you're going to see this in homeless populations. And the third one is crowding. So just due to the transmission of this lice, crowding along with poverty and poor hygiene can increase the transmission of this type of lice. And with regards to pubic lice, some of the risk factors include being sexually active. And because of this, young adults and adolescents are more commonly affected by pubic lice. So we're now going to talk about the transmission and life cycle of lice. And we're going to also split this up depending on the species of lice. So with regards to head lice, the transmission of head lice includes direct contact and indirect contact. So indirect contact through fomites, and these can be anything, maybe furniture, maybe a hat, anything like that. Now, with regards to the species of head lice, these adult lice are generally two to three millimeters in size, and the female head lice lives about one month and lays about seven to ten nits per day. Nits are simply the eggs and these nits eventually hatch into nymphs. And what happens is the female louse will cement the nits to the base of hair stock. And here's an image of a nit cemented to a hair stock. With regards to body lice, body lice can also be transmitted through direct contact and indirect contact. More importantly, clothing with regards to indirect contact. With regards to adult body lice, they're a bit larger in size than head lice, and they're about two to four millimeters in size. And body lice lives in clothing and lays eggs in seams of clothing, which is different than head lice. And body lice can live up to three days without feeding on a host. So body lice feeds on the blood of a host. And with regards to pubic lice, and here's an image of a pubic lice, pubic lice are transmitted through sexual activities. They are sexually transmitted. And they may be transmitted through indirect contact through fomites, but this may be less likely. Contact with eyes can lead to a condition known as pediculosis ciliaris, which we mentioned before, so an infestation of the eyelashes. And an adult crab louse are generally smaller in size than the other types of lice, and they are about 0.8 to 1.2 millimeters in size. And a female crab louse lives for about three to four weeks, laying about three nits per day. And they cement the nits to the base of hair stalks, like head lice. So what is the clinical presentation of having lice? So some of the signs and symptoms include simply seeing the lice or nits in the hair. And some of the other symptoms include having intense puritis, so intensely itchy due to an allergic reaction from lice saliva. And this generally occurs due to sensitization from the li lice saliva, which takes about four to six weeks. This sensitization and the puritis can lead to a morbilliform rash. Because of the puritis, we can see excoriation, so we can see scratch marks. We can also see hyperpigmentation, and individuals may have regional lymphadenopathy or enlarged tender lymph nodes. 
Associated conditions of having lice include secondary bacterial infections from the excoriation. So if an individual is scratching because of the lice, they may break their skin barrier, leading to a secondary infection of bacteria, and these can include empedigo, and the lice can transmit bacterial infections themselves. And some of these include Bartonella quintana bacteria, which is the causative agent of trench fever, and the bacteria Rickettsia proezekii, which is the causative agent of typhus. So having lice can be very detrimental to an individual's health because of their ability to transmit these bacteria. So how do we diagnose and how do we treat lice? So diagnosis of lice is generally through visualizing the nymphs or or the adult lice. If the nymphs or the adult lice are not visualized, but we do see nits attached to hair stock, but it is greater than 6.5 millimeters from the scalp, these individuals likely do not have an active infestation. Once we make the diagnosis, how do we treat lice? Treatment involves using topical pediculicides. And these include permethrin 1%, so we can use Nix or Quilata shampoo. And it also involves removal. So this can involve fine combing of the hair with diluted vinegar solution that can help remove the nits from hair stalks. We also want to make sure we clean clothing and beddings in hot water with detergent, especially with body lice. And in some cases, shaving the head may also be necessary as well. If an individual continually has issues with having an infestation of lice, using oral ivermectin can also be used to eliminate the lice as well. So if you want to learn more about other skin conditions, please check out my dermatology playlist. Also, please check out my scabies lesson as well. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.